But right now, she's getting ready to take on the most potent offensive team in the nation. Jada Coleman leading things off. Had a two-run double yesterday in the 8-0 run rule win against UCF. So UCF wearing the all-white uniforms with barely visible numbers on their jerseys. Very excited about that. On deck, Jocelyn Allo, who hit a three-run homer yesterday. There's Joss wearing number 78. And unlike yesterday, the wind is blowing out. Yeah, yesterday the wind was blowing definitely in. Today the flags are stiff out to center field. So a ball up in the air is going to be aided by that wind. And I tell you what, Pam, Oklahoma does not need any more help for the long ball. <laughs> you see the weather, it's going to be hot. Getting up around 90 degrees. Oklahoma leading the country in batting average, runs, home runs, slugging percentage, shutouts, and ERA on the pitching side. Just two losses on the season, and here's a 3-0 to Coleman. Not a good start for UCF. Coleman fired up after taking the four-pitch walk. Yeah, this Oklahoma team has learned how to be very patient at the plate. They know how to take the walk. They've got 242 walks on the season. And now Jocelyn Allo, who has hit more home runs in the history of this sport than anybody else at number 116 yesterday, a three-run shot. They pitched to her when first base was open. There were runners on second and third. Yeah, so three three more RBI for Jocelyn Allo yesterday in a situation where they had first base open. Stick. Woodall starts her off with a strike. Now we talked to Woodall and yesterday's starter Gianna Mancha, and both of them said that they were looking forward to this matchup and asked point blank, will you pitch to Allo? And they said yes. Both of them without hesitation said they're gonna give their best stuff. They said when it came to the pitch that Allo was able to hit out of the park, Gianna Mancha said, I missed, and she took advantage. And that has happened 116 times in her career. I don't know that they've all been misses, but she is able to elevate a ball anywhere in the zone and hit it out of the park. You don't need to help out Jocelyn Allo, but Mancha definitely delivered a cookie yesterday that she sent out of the park. Yeah, it didn't just leave the park. It, <laughs> it, was I mean, a blast. it, it almost hit the tennis courts over there. <laughs> 1-1 one, one now to Allo. When it comes to throwing to Jocelyn Allo, there's no reason that you need to give her anything close. She's a very disciplined hitter, will draw the walk if necessary. She's shown that she's not going to give herself up repeatedly. She's got 48 walks on the year alone. Jocelyn swings through that. Jocelyn Allo from Hawaii, born and raised on the island of Oahu. And there's her dad, Levi, who since a very early age took her out to just hit a lot of softballs and spent a lot of money to get her onto the mainland so she could work on her craft. And it has worked out well. 2-2. Two -two. On the ground, great play over there by the second baseman. Molina to throw out Allo. One good piece of hitting by Allo to go the other way with it. They were trying to keep the ball low in the zone, but a good play by Justine Molina. You've got speed on the bases and Jada Coleman able to beat that out, put herself in scoring position, but a nice out by Justine Molina over there at second base. Coleman was able to get over to second on the sweet play by Molina. And now a runner in scoring position for Tiare Jennings. Jennings went 0 for 3 yesterday. Now this is just another, I mean, just calling them all dangerous hitters might be uh, just easy to, easier enough to say. She set an NCAA freshman record last year with 92 runs driven in. Third in the nation this year with 72. And leads Oklahoma in that RBI category, leading off for part of the year. Jennings, a unanimous first team, all Big 12 selection this year. Mm 
We also have the number two RBI leader in this game, Jada Cody, who's playing third right now for UCF. And early in a game, pitchers are going to try to extend a zone, figure out where the strikes are going to be called back behind the plate. We've seen the ball down in the zone is going to be a strike, but so far unable to extend left and right or hitting the corners. Second walk surrendered by Woodall. And Pam, you have to be so careful around these Oklahoma hitters that at times early in a game, they will take advantage because they are so patient, because they are so disciplined. JT Gasso has utilized so many different areas of focus to make them better hitters, whether it's vision training, cognition training, they are using all kinds of that technology to make them better as hitters. And when you've already got this kind of a hitter to the plate with the mechanics that they've got, it's dangerous, and we've seen that in the numbers that they've been able to put up this year. And Grace Lyons, the cleanup hitter, the shortstop, who has improved her offensive numbers dramatically since she came onto campus. And Grace Lyons came into Oklahoma as a defensive specialist, was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year this year, came in as a great defender and has had to learn how to be a great hitter came in last year hitting 392 has upped that number this season hitting above 400. Lines takes it into right field. That is one hopped in front of Volpe, but the bases now are loaded. Volpe is saying that she caught the ball. The umpires are saying no catch in the outfield. So good piece of hitting by just taking this pitch down and away, going the other way with it. You notice these Oklahoma hitters don't try to do too much with their swing and take that ball the other way. The umpires on the field ruled that this ball did hit the ground before going into the glove of Elise Volpe out there in right. The runners took advantage. They had to hesitate, but down the line, Grace Lyons beat the throw at first base from the right fielder. But if the throw had gone to second, they had T.R.A. Jennings hung. So now the umpire and crew gets together. Remember, we do have replay capability at a centralized position in Pittsburgh. And just looking at it here from the booth in the naked eye, it looked to me like it, it one hopped into her glove. Let's look at it together. Yeah, it looks like it has that hop or a short hop into the glove that tells you that it hit the ground first. If it had gone straight into the leather, that would tell me that it was a catch. But because it gave that little kick right before she was able to secure it in the leather, that tells me it hit the ground first. But a good try by Volpe over there to Great try to play. sell it, right? Definitely, but she had to come away with that throw to second base to get T.R.A. Jennings. So the bases are loaded for Elisa Brito. Transfer from Oregon. One for two yesterday with a stolen base and a run scored in the 8 nothing run rule win and an early chance for OU. One went away from the World Series. Rito, a major contributor in her first year on campus. Second team all Pac-12 yesterday as a freshman in Eugene, Oregon. And that is a foul ball called by the umpire, Terry Holt, at home. Yeah, off of her foot. It wasn't a foul ball because it went foul. It was a dead ball because it hit off of her foot down the line. And now the 1-1. One, one. Upstairs, Ashley Griffin doing the catching today. A couple of catchers, Cody caught yesterday for the starter, Mancha. There's a good look at Ashley, who starts when Woodall is in the circle. Pitches are called by their head coach, Cindy Ball Malone. And there's a base hit. Oklahoma breaks on top. Everybody advances 60 feet. 
Alyssa Brito, nice job going down to get that ball. Actually, that one's a little bit elevated, knowing that the drop ball is what she's going to throw all day. That drop ball hung up there, and Brito got her hands all the way through that one, punches it through the 5-6 hole. A nice throw in to Cody as the cut keeps it in front. So Oklahoma able to get on the board first, but because of the defense of UCF, keeps it at just one, just one run. 43rd run driven in for Brito, and there is an early conference in the circle, and already UCF has a pitcher warming in the pen. They're trying to get an identification again there. It is Caitlin Felton who is warming up. Freshman from Rico, Florida, who hit the head coach says is the future for us. They are losing both Mancha and Woodall, their two aces this year, as they have exhausted their eligibility. And now Kinsey Hansen, welcome back. Just one at bat in the regional. And now she is not just in the starting lineup, but is catching. Coming back from a hurt knee, also tweaked an ankle. Getting back just in time for the the stretch want stretch run, pardon me, towards a championship. Hansen sends it foul. And that was one thing Patty Gasso said during her pro her post game press conference yesterday, that she feels this team is just now hitting its stride. Can you imagine? But it was really the timely situation of the losses that they had that gave them the experience that they needed to become so complete this time in the year when they lost to Texas early on they realized that they were putting a lot of pressure on themselves as hitters and then when they lost in the Big 12 tournament without Jordy Ball in the circle they realized that they were the pitchers were putting too much pressure on themselves in the circle Hansen takes one that is called a ball. Woodall with a smile as she comes forward, not agreeing. It's a really nice pitch, and you know that she's going to throw that drop, drop curve, outside corner. I like that spot. Tries to extend the zone, but doesn't get the call. Remember, these OU hitters have trained to know exactly where the strike zone is, and they make adjustments between pitches, not just between at-bats. So now the 1-2 on the way. Base is still loaded, and just one away in the first. Saw the frame by Griffin pulling it back up into the strike zone. Evens the count up at two and two. When I like the call of Woodall in the circle, knowing that she's a drop ball pitcher, it's harder to elevate on a pitcher that throws hard and down, especially hard and away from these right-handed hitters that are so home run dominant. So I like this call, but she has to live on the bottom of the zone and has to make sure she hits those corners against these dangerous hitters. Hanson pops it up. Just over the screen, another sold out. Marita Hines field. And take a look, they're gonna build a new ballpark. They hope it will be up and running in a couple of years. It will seat 3,000. This seat's just under 1,400, not nearly enough. Fans again beyond the outfield wall who are able to enjoy the game without being inside. This is the 25th pitch coming of this inning now for Woodall. Holy cow, she got a hold of that one, but that's what you have to do as a pitcher. If you can locate that ball inside far enough, a good hitter can try to keep their hands inside, but more often than not, it's gonna be a hard foul ball, just another strike. And that's how you have to see it in the circle. As a hitter, though, that was my favorite one because I felt like, oh, I like that. I got a lot of barrel on that ball. It gave me confidence in an at-bat, but it also reminded me to be aware of the outside pitch. So as a hitter, those feel so good, but now you've got to be aware. They know you'll swing on it. You have to be ready for that outside corner. Another 2-2 two -two on the way to Hanson. Taken inside to fill it up. Full count now. Taylor Snow waits on deck. And already a huge situation for the redshirt senior Woodall.
Jansen, little nubber handed by Cody, sends it home just in the nick of time. Great play by Cody to charge in from third. And one of the best players for UCF on that hot corner. She's been playing catcher a lot this season, but this ground ball is a, a slow roller. You've got to charge that throw on the run, knowing it is a force play at home. I love the way that Griffin plays this like a first baseman. Gets the foot squarely planted in the middle of home plate. No doubt that she is touching that plate. Gets the out, huge out against a big hitter like Kinsey Hansen. And now two away for Talon Snow. Snow has struggled so far in the postseason, just one for seven. They get a hit yesterday, that was her first hit of the postseason. Started out at Auburn before transferring over to OU. Well, and Pam, I was actually surprised to see Talon Snow's name at first base, knowing that Kinsey Hansen was moved back behind the plate. I expected to see Lindsey Elam over at first base today. She drew two walks in the game opener, had two hits in the regional, so has not found her stride offensively. I thought they were going to put the bat back in her hands to help her. And pardon me, Snow did not get a hit yesterday. Did score a run, but not a hit. Good numbers in the top 10 in the Big 12 and batting average, Oklahoma, the regular season champions again. 10th straight, but lost in the tournament to Oklahoma State in the final. Oklahoma State eliminated Clemson, so the Cowgirls are in the World Series. Snow sends it out of play. Yeah, great season for Clemson. Valerie Cagle, another another great year for her in the circle and with the bat. The Clemson season comes to an end. They do not find their way to the Women's College World Series in just their third season of play. And their second full season because 2020 was their first one and that got cut short because of COVID. Another chance for Snow, down one and two. the plate and while it's just the first inning this is one of those statement moments for Taylor Snow to be able to put up a crooked number in the first inning really set the tone as the visitor the Sooners don't have the advantage of being in their own dugout they're across the field in the first base dugout today another full count Emma Woodall has really had to work in this first inning. But so far, just given up one run. And look at that in the first inning this season. Oklahoma is plus 103. Not too shabby. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> just two losses on the season, Texas and Oklahoma State that we just mentioned. Snow in the left field and a, an escape artist for Kama Woodall. Grabbed by Bay Hirano. Oklahoma plays one but leaves them loaded season at the Women's College World Series. And when it comes to Nicole May, she lives around the knees with a heavy drop ball. We'll also use a curve and a rise for the strikeout. But when it comes to her, it's a change of speed and good movement that makes her hard to barrel up. Sophomore from Pleasanton, California. First up, Elise Volpe in the first hit of the weekend. A great start for Volpe after her team got no hit yesterday by Troutwine. This is a start that UCF was looking for yesterday. A nice spot. We saw that the slappers were not using the ground. They were going for the hard hit, trying to punch it through the infield. It did not work for them yesterday against Troutwine. But today, first batter, first hit, and first base runner to get things started. First hit Oklahoma has given up since the fourth inning of the final game when they Beat AM 20 to nothing. It's a new record for the largest margin of victory in an NCAA tournament game. They've gone six and two third innings total without giving up a hit. The no hitter yesterday, a five inning no hitter by Hope Troutwine. Kennedy Searcy, the sophomore from Jacksonville, a unanimous pick as a first team all conference performer. 
Sends it into left field. Brito gives way to Lyons, who is the defensive player of the year in the Big 12 this season. And yeah, when it comes to a fly ball in between the infield and the outfield, an outfielder has priority, but out there, Grace Lyons was camped underneath it loud enough to call off Brito. Good communication, good defense for Oklahoma. Lions roar. <laughs> kept it, kept her away. That was bad. Thank you. Jada <laughs> Cody is the best power hitter on this team. And really, guys, one of the best hitters in the country. Sophomore from California, second in the nation in RBIs, just behind Addison Bernard at Wichita State. Bernard, the home run leader as well this season for the Shockers. Good stop behind the plate by Hansen. The ball that skipped in from May. Well, and good to see her able to go down on that knee aggressively. We saw her very ginger on it in practice before the Super Regional. So we were wondering about her availability here in the Super Regional. But good to see her back behind the plate healthy and ready to go. There's another strike. UCF, by the way, is a team that likes to run. They're not a big power team except for Cody, but they have stolen a ton of bases, 92 on the season. And yeah, they tried yesterday, but they got thrown out by Lindsey Elam. Oklahoma has only allowed 12 stolen bases all year. Lifted into short right field. Boone for out number two. Good job to neutralize Cody's power in that at bat by Nicole May. And here's the first baseman, Shannon Doherty. Yet another sophomore. A lot of youth on this team. The problem for them next year will be replacing Mancha and Woodall in the circle. They're two pitching aces. And right now, trying to keep their season alive against Oklahoma. Hit number two. Doherty takes the first pitch into left field. Well, in the post-game press conference for Cindy Ball Malone, she talked about how her hitters, she was not happy with the adjustments they were making. They were not communicating well from player to player. They were not making adjustments from at bat to at bat. And when it came to Hope Troutwine in the circle, she was giving up mistakes. But UCF unable to capitalize on those moments. You're seeing a different UCF team today offensively. They're communicating as they're coming off the field and the hitters are making adjustments against Nicole May. Both hits coming on first pitch swings. Catcher Ashley Griffin swings and misses. We had a look at Cindy Ball Malone. Her staff for the AAC Staff of the Year, the American Conference Staff of the Year, as they won both the regular season and tournament titles. Beating USF 11-0 in the championship game. That's an emphatic statement. Yeah, a run rule win in the conference tournament championship. That was an exclamation point. They run the regular season championship, then came away with that run rule win in the tournament championship. This UCF team wanted to head into the postseason with a lot of noise. Able to beat Michigan twice to win their first home regional ever. Another pop-up. Johns at third, squeezes it a couple of singles, but they are both stranded. As May got three, five ball, three fly balls to get out of the inning. And just a terrific gesture by this Oklahoma team and sending shock waves throughout the entire nation again with another mass shooting. Kylie Sandejo was the coach who got in touch with Coach Gasso who said that she rarely, she could count on probably three fingers how many times she has responded to DMs, but that certainly touched her heart and her student athletes were all on board. Coach also has a, a, a heart, an emblem on her visor to help remember what happened there down in Texas. Jana John starting things off here in the second inning. For the Sooners, the defending champs just able to plate one run in the first inning. Came a Woodall through 34 pitches, but got out of a jam, left the bases loaded. And then UCF got a couple of hits in the bottom of the first after getting no hit yesterday. Confidence builder, Jen, to get a couple of hits there? No doubt. Not only a confidence boost for those 
to get out of that situation, but they got hit. They were able to come away with just one run in that first inning for the Sooners in a bases loaded situation with one out. I mean, that right there is a statement for this UCF squad. Then Jones got hit, or Johns got hit, excuse me, to start off the second inning. So Woodall has put the leadoff runner on in both innings. Yeah, hit batters and free passes, definitely one of those things you don't want to do when you are facing Oklahoma. It's the 23rd hit by pitch for this pitching staff this season. And you see Johns, who has the most hit by pitches of any active player in D1, creeping up on 100. Janice started out at South Carolina before coming over to Oklahoma. This is her second season playing for the Sooners. Now the number nine hitter, Riley Boone, steps into the box. 0 for 1 yesterday, did score a run, looks to put down a bunt. We do have a defensive replacement, just like yesterday, after just one inning. Elise Volpe not in right field anymore. They've gone with Denali Schapacher. Schapacher, thank you, I apologize. Schapacher, who is playing in her last season, already has a job lined up to be a trainer, an athletic trainer at UCF next season. Boone got it down, but it died in the batter's box. Advance the runner. Yep, so they are, the umpire is signaling that either there's an illegal pitch or out of the box call. because the umpire goes over to talk to coach Cindy Ball Malone. That tells me it is an illegal pitch call. And what that will do is it will bring back Jada Coleman and put her in the box with a ball. Yeah, she is definitely out of the box. So it may not be an illegal pitch. It's probably a out of the box call on that. It was a fair ball. Batter's box is not foul territory. You take a direct line from the back of home plate and draw those lines out to first base. It was a fair ball, but she was definitely out of the box. Nice look by our camera crew to pull that, that up. It's the left foot that steps across the line and is out of the box. So take a look. Left foot out of the box. And as soon as you make contact with the ball, you are automatically out. It's a dead ball out. No, it's not a dead ball out. It is a play that can be taken either way by the defense. They can either take the result of the play or take the out call. In this situation, they're going to put Riley Boone back in the box. And Boone struck out on the next pitch. A lot going on there, Jenny. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, the, the thing that's hard now is you've got four umpires, and all of them can throw the arm up to signal, and it's the same signal for everything, whether it's illegal pitch, out of the box, runner leaving early from a base. It's the exact same call. Obstruction is the same call. Yeah. So you have to decipher which umpire saying it, what they're looking at, and in the moment, what happened. Back to the top of the order. Jada Coleman walked and scored back in the first inning. Four pitch walk given up by Woodall to start off the game for UCF. How about giving us a variation of the signals instead of just that one dead ball, hold out your fist horizontal. Yeah, it's, it's left arm out with a fist is the call for all of those. John's taking off, the throw is in time. It could have been a hit and run. Griffin nailed Johns. That could not have worked out better for UCF. It did look like a hit and run with Coleman needing to put the bat on the ball. She tried. It was so far outside. And as Janet Johns was trying to advance over to second base, not in time. Great tag. And now two outs in the inning. 
and nobody on base for Oklahoma. And that one hop, that really was a great grab over there by Macario was the shortstop covering. And you could tell Johns was kind of looking behind her saying, please, I hope you hit the ball, and she <laughs> didn't. And so she was thrown out. First time that Johns has been thrown out all year, had been four for four. So nobody on base now for Coleman. Jocelyn Allo looming in the on-deck circle. And we're all starting to find her groove a little bit. Some encouragement from Griffin, who popped out from behind the plate. Now, UCF will do this in between pitches. They they come together, they call it what, Wi-Fi? A Wi-Fi block. They say the circle for UCF, the pitcher, is their Wi-Fi block. So every time in between each and every pitch, they will come towards the middle with a couple of steps, gain that power, and head back to their spots. One, two, way outside for Coleman. And there's the walk-in. They don't come all the way in. Remember, you only have so many conferences within a game, so they don't come all the way together to have it count as a conference, but the team will continually take those steps towards the middle, regroup, and then head back to their spots. And we all wanted that one to call just off the plate. Kayla Woodall after a shaky first inning, trying to get out of this unscathed after hitting Johns to start off the second. Full count with Allo on deck. Second time Coleman has walked. And here comes the home run queen. Goddess, whatever. <laughs> There's not enough words to talk about this. <laughs> I mean, Jocelyn Allo is the hitter that all of us are in our dreams, and she's been put on the or on the USA team to hit. I want to welcome those of you watching us now on ESPN who just saw Virginia Tech and Florida. You're watching Oklahoma and UCF. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you. From Norman, Oklahoma scored one run in the first inning, but left the bases loaded. And now with two outs here in the top of the second, a walk to Jada Coleman. You joined us just in time, folks, because <laughs> Jocelyn Allo's coming up, and this building is electric. Yeah, you just saw Lauren Chamberlain leading the crowd in the Boomer Sooner chant, and now everyone on their feet for the home run queen. Yep, it was Chamberlain's record that Allo has since shattered. 116 for her career, hit a 3-1, three, three-run bomb yesterday. When we wondered yesterday, Pam, there were runners on second and third when Allo came up to bat. First base was open. When it comes to pitching to Jocelyn Allo with first base open, what's the, what's the mentality? They three to her, three-run bomb. Now you got second and third open. Put her on here. You're only down by a run. Wind is blowing out towards right field. Let's take a look at what she did yesterday. It was a huge shot, and it was a no-doubter. It was left thigh-high in her wheelhouse over the stands in left center field. A blast, a little souvenir for that girl as she sits out in home run alley out there beyond the fences. And now a 2-0. Right up the middle, Allo delivers with the base hit. And again, these UCF pitchers told us that they would be going after Allo. They'd be going after all these hitters on the best hitting team literally in the country. And Allo comes through with the two out single. Tiari Jennings now coming up. Well, Pam, this game's getting chippy. I don't know if you're picking up on Jada Coleman right now, but when she is, she drew the walk and got she was staring down and talking to Woodall in the circle. On that base hit by Allo up the middle, Coleman is yelling at her team in the dugout. 
this game definitely has a lot of emotion riding on it as both of these teams playing for, to extend their season. Oklahoma won yesterday, 8 nothing and a no-hitter, a run rule situation. So they're a win away from the World Series. UCF fighting to stay in and force a decisive game three tomorrow. And Lauren Chamberlain's got, she's got one of the best seats in the house. She's right there behind home plate in the first row. Well, you say home run queen. Does that make her home run princess? Yes. I mean, that's where royalty sits. Or the queen mother, right? That's the one who used to be the queen. <laughs> That's right. I like that. <laughs> There's Lauren. <laughs> Commissioner of a new professional league, the WPF, in which Jocelyn Allo was surprised, the number one pick. And yeah, she was also the number one pick in Athletes Unlimited. So we talked to her. Which one are you going to go with? She said, I'm not sure yet. Jennings takes a strike. He already walked in the first inning. Sophomore third in the nation and runs driven in coming into this game. That's playable. Fighting the sun, but the left fielder, very exciting. And then you have UCF hosting a super regional for the first time as Bejarano comes up for the first time. The last non-Power 5 team to host a regional, much less the Super, was Louisiana and JMU doing that, both of them doing that in 2016. So Central Florida doing something that had not been done by a non-Power 5 school in six years and hosting that regional and here they are in the Super against the defending champions. Bejarano, the sophomore from Cottonwood, Arizona. Just came up with some huge hits to beat Michigan in the regional. Had to beat them twice, and they did. But able to get the hits that they needed to advance here to Super Regionals, and her brother Tanner was not going to be able to make the trip, and so Maddie Bejarano tweeted out that she needed help, signed an NIL deal with the Sons of UCF, who signed her to that deal, and were able to get Tanner here to Norman to celebrate with, her, with his sister. And they're very close siblings. You get a good look at Tanner, this contingency of UCF fans down the first baseline. Trying to pump up the crowd, gotta love Tanner. Yeah, he's trying to outdo Chamberlain. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> As the first three ball count given up by May, the comebacker handled, low throw picked up by Snow to get the first out of the second. Well, and what you saw in that play was a little bit of emotion coming out in May. She rushed that throw over there to first base to Taylin Snow. Taylin able to route, get that one wrangled in, but that was some emotion that came to the surface in Nicole May in that throw over to first base. Yeah, we have seen quite a bit of emotion so far. UCF, a very fiery team. Here's Janisha Rowe. She will walk yesterday. Florida Gulf Coast transfer, puts the ball down. Great charge by Johns, who read that all the way, and Snow makes another play at first. Man, Taylin Snow is lighting it up over there at first base. Two tough plays back to back, and Taylin Snow able to get the glove around both of them. Janet Johns has to rush this throw. She knows she has a lot of speed going down the line, but Taylin Snow, good reach, keeps the foot on the bag. That's the kind of defense you have to have to come away with a national championship. And right now, Oklahoma still error-free in the postseason. Jennifer Rocha, the pitching coach, coming in to gather her infield together. NCAA.com is the place to go to get all of your information on the Women's College World Series. The countdown is on. It's coming up Thursday, about a half hour north of here in Oklahoma City. Game one, Thursday noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. OKC time. I love Oklahoma City. And when you 
say Oklahoma City, all I can think about is Hall of Fame Stadium. That is where you like to spend this time of year. We always played the national championship game on Memorial Day. Now with the extension of Super Regionals and the championship series, it's pushed back a little bit. Yesterday was my 26th anniversary of my last national championship. And so kind of a special day got pointed out by uh, one of our crew. Uh, Jonathan Fader made sure to let me know and I appreciate that. One of your three national championships at Arizona. Should have been four because UCLA beat you in the, in the one you lost, but then that got vacated. <laughs> Yep. And, and they just vacated it. Yep. I mean, it should go like in the Olympics if there's somebody who, you know, makes gets caught doing something they shouldn't do. The gold medal goes to the silver medalist. Yeah. I think we need to right that wrong, Jen. <laughs> I'm on it. I can't be stingy. I got three for you crying it. out Not loud. bad. But that's what three these Three more than most of us. That's exactly <laughs> right. And, and when you talk about national champions, that's exactly what the Oklahoma Sooners are. They won in 21. They're looking to try to go back to back with it. Dusty Molina, the number eight hitter, playing second base for the UCF Knights. In their seventh NCAA, there you go. They're going to, in the new stadium, they they might have to shrink those if they keep winning <laughs> championships because there's going to be, they're going to take up a lot of room. Now oh, you can put the Sooners closer together and just extend go. the number, right? Yeah. Nicole May surrenders a two-out walk to Molina. The third base runner for the Knights. And when it comes to strikeout to walk ratio, it's not it's not great, but it's not terrible either. So when you when you talk about Nicole May, she's got 89 strikeouts on the year. That's her 26th walk. She's thrown 78 innings on the year, but you want to make sure that those walks are something that don't come across very often because you don't want to put any momentum in the hands of the other team. Kayla Macario trying to get something done. We talk about the the ratio though. Before that strike, May had thrown 22 pitches in this game. Half of them were balls. Yeah. Well, and what did we see yesterday? Hope Troutwine threw more balls than she did strikes in a no hitters. That's Until the seventh inning. Correct. Or the and fifth inning. Pardon me. The last <laughs> inning. The last inning. And when it comes down to it, you have to make sure that you're filling the zone with strikes and not giving any momentum to the offense. Really nice pitch down in the zone, but that one's over the heart of the plate. That's a very hittable pitch. You've got to be careful with these UCF hitters. It is the bottom of the lineup, but they're playing for their lives today. Macario was the American Conference Rookie of the Year. She's down 0-2 to May with Molina over at first. Oh, wow. That was a really nice pitch at the bottom of the zone. And on a 1-2 pitch, I actually think that's too close. But when it comes to throwing a drop ball, that one is knee high. I think it nips the corner. Granted, we're a little offset, but that was a beautiful spot that we've seen called a strike already in this game. And it looked like home plate umpire Terry Holt was getting into his I'm going to ring her up position and then didn't do it. That was really close. That one was not. <laughs> But that's why you throw a rise ball, to elevate a hitter's eyes. You don't need to throw it to be a strike. You don't need to throw it to get a swing and a miss. You just need to get a hitter's eyes out of the tunnel that they were so focused on previously. So that elevates a hitter's eyes, makes it hard to come back and attack that pitch down and under your hands. That is strike three. Macario goes down looking. Molina stuck at first. And the first strikeout of the game for May. They're on the outfield wall as well. Lauren was gesticulating. Whatever she was saying, it was with passion. <laughs> well, I think you know this about most athletes, Pam. Everything we do, we do with pretty yeah. much a lot of emotion. Yeah, and the, the great ones do, certainly. Definitely, and that's what you have to do. You've got to play with that passion, and you live your life that way, too. Grace Lyons singled and was stranded when Oklahoma left the bases loaded in the first inning. Grace Lyons sends it over the 2013 national champion. Sticker on the wall. Sooners with the home run. Huge home run. She flies it into home plate, greeted by all of her 
teammates. Huge home run. A statement for Oklahoma. The number four batter able to step in and hit it right where we were just talking about. Left of the platform where Chamberlain and Ricketts are sitting. No doubter. Love the home run that gets out of here in a hurry. A line drive. Remember, this team does not train to hit home runs. They train to hit line drives. And that ball on a line, over the wall, no way to defend it. Oklahoma's second run of the day and home run number 135 of the year. Yes, it is. It's also the 20th for Lions. So she joins Allo and Jennings in the 20 home run club for Oklahoma this season. They lead the nation in home runs and many other categories as well. Sooners have homered in 50 of their last 56 games. They have their streak intact and they have doubled their lead. Lisa Brito with the RBI single brought in the first run of the game back in the first inning. It's still staggering. Okay, what, 135 home runs, and they've given up eight all year. <laughs> all year. They have hit 10 home runs in the postseason. In the postseason, 10, Oklahoma 10, opponents eight all year. Yeah, 55 games and just eight home runs. Yeah. And this is just their fifth game of the postseason. There you see the, and they've only struck out. This is staggering. Great graphic on the uh, that you see right there. They've only struck out three more times than they've hit home runs this year. Well, and that number would have been pretty close to even had they not had those miscues in this game. We had the strikeout of Riley Boone last inning. So, yeah. The numbers are staggering. And we say video game numbers. There's not oh. another way to say how good this Oklahoma offense is. Brito up the middle. Macario, nice and a good stretch. Doherty playing a little nifty first base to get the out. And you always need that first baseman that has flexibility, some height, and the ability to stay on the bag to make that catch. Good play by Doherty to rein in a throw that was a little wide by Macario over there at short. Have to get the first out of the inning. Come on, Jen. <laughs> I don't know how to say they're good any other way. <laughs> Phenomenal, amazing, fantastic. They've only given up 47 runs all year. I think only 36 of them are earned. Yes, that's a true fact. <laughs> So not only these ridiculous offensive numbers as Hansen steps in, but their pitchers have a .80 earn run average for the entire season. Okay, here's another one. 510 <laughs> runs on the year that they've scored, only given up 47 as a team. Molina skips it, not in time, Hansen on base for the second time today. Gets her first hit. And it's good to see her moving well. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see a healthy Kinsey Hansen take over. That is her first hit in the postseason. She had a sack fly yesterday, did not have a hit in her pinch hit opportunity in the regionals. And she, she pushes this one into the ground, legs it out. It's misplayed at first base. And that's a tough play by a, for a second baseman, Molina, who had to go up the middle to get the ball and then try to turn around and make the hard throw over to first base. Because of Hansen's knee issues, we'll see a pinch runner over at first. It is Hannah Kaur, the freshman outfielder. Taylor Snow flew out. Her first time up. First pitch swinging, playable for Rowe in center. Two away. Yeah, Taylor Snow not known for her home runs. She does have three on the season, but is more of that gap to gap hitter for Oklahoma. That one left too high in the air. An easy play out there in the outfield. And now 
now with two away. Jana Johns tries to do some more damage. She was hit by a pitch her first time up against Woodall. John's an excellent student athlete, 4.0. Jenny Dalton like always. <laughs> right. <laughs> now taking off, throw down, goes into center field. Good back up there, right, by Molina to actually keep it from going onto the grass. You're exactly right, Pam, and I love the response by Molina. As she gets that short hop, she comes right up to try to tag out core, knowing that if she knew the ball got by, she might get up and try to advance. So a great job defensively to not just back up, but go for the second play in case there was a little bit of aggression on the base pass. You've seen a couple of nice plays by Molina over there at second, and you see Core now starting in the sprinter stance. Now she's back down. And head coach Cindy Ball Malone said she loves second baseman. Yeah, she says she recruits second baseman. When I giggled and said, oh, a second baseman is a shortstop with brains, she said, you're kind of right because they have to have the aggression, but they have to have touch. They have to be more well-rounded than a typical shortstop. Shortstop can be very aggressive moving forward, throwing across the diamond, but at second base, you have to have a lot more touch and awareness of what's coming in the box because your responsibility is to cover on a slapper very different than they are at the shortstop position. And you would know as a converted shortstop who played second at Arizona. It took me an entire season to figure out how to read a hitter's hands and play that correctly, moving from the left side of the field over to the right side of the field. 3-1 pitch. Johns lets it go. Fourth walk surrendered by Woodall. Now runner in scoring position for Riley Boone, who struck out her first time up. So a pinch hitter will be coming in for Riley Boone, seeing an opportunity to score another run. They put in a hitter that has just one home, one hit on the year, and it was a big home run. Tariah Coleman coming in to pinch hit for Boone, who did strike out. See the number of numbers for Coleman. Three hits on the year. That one hit came in regionals. It was the big home run. The whole team was so excited that she was able to get that long ball and join the home run club for the Sooners. Yep, her only home run of the season for the freshman from Houston. down one and two. Roman goes down swinging to end the inning. But they did get another run thanks to the home run from Lions. The last time she pitched, that was the middle of three games in the Bedlam series, and they won that one. Able to, so far, not lose a game in the NCAA tournament. Riding the arms of Trout Line and Nicole May, who's starting today. UCF needs a win to force a game three here tomorrow in Norman. Volpe, that's foul ball. It's a very good call. I like how 
the home plate umpire was able to jump out beyond Terry Holt. The home plate umpire get out to the line to see where that ball was. Love that aggression by the home plate umpire to make that right call. Volpe, the junior from Scarborough, Ontario. Second year at UCF, she's a great player at Bucknell, was the Patriot League Player of the Year before she went further south. As a Canadian, I would think she would enjoy being in Orlando in the winter. Yes, but not the <laughs> summer. <laughs> and she goes home. Oh, she sits by a lake. Your favorite. Oh, yes. She's on the Canadian Junior National Team, fighting through some injuries this year. Getting healthy, that one is sky high to Coleman. But props to Volpe to get the leadoff hit to start the game. It set the tone in this one. Yesterday, UCF unable to get anything going against Oklahoma pitching. Hope Troutwine threw that complete game no hitter. She was a hit by batter and walk away from a perfect game gave it up with those free passes, and UCF did not make great adjustments. Volpe started with a very different attitude for UCF. Yeah, got no hit yesterday. Denali Shawpocker batting for the first time. Came in as a defensive replacement, now in the number two slot hitting for Searcy. Senior from Bradenton. One of the captains this year, who is seeing her collegiate career come to a close this season. Well, Pam, I don't know that you can explain the emotion that sits behind knowing that this could be your last game and the kind of pressure it puts on you as you see the game wind down. So they're sitting in the bottom of the third inning. They know they've got, you know, just a couple more innings to be able to push a game three in this situation. And those emotions, you have to try to find a way to push those down and play loose and free, even though you know this may be the last time you take the field as a softball player. And one and two with Jada Cody on deck. Cody leading this night team in just about every offensive category. She hold up. Yeah, definitely. You want to make sure that you keep that barrel from breaking the plane of the plate. It stayed on her shoulder. It, it came off a bit, but it definitely did not break the plane of the plate. And that pitch up in the zone actually almost hit the bat, which would have given her a strike because of a foul ball had it been able to nip. That's the hard part about a pitch up in the zone. A lot of times you do foul it off just accidentally. Cole May, 14-0 on the season. ERA just under one coming into this game. Gives up the one-out walk. So a baseball matchup. We're looking at the NLE showdown between the Phillies and the first place Mets. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern of baseball tonight. Game also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Media. Let's talk a little RBI action with this one. Major League Baseball RBI leaders, Pete Alonzo, number one at 45. Let's put that in perspective. We have three of the top four RBI hitters in this game in the NCAA. And here's number two, Jada Cody, up for the second time. Flew out to right field her first time up. Great numbers for the Murrieta, California native. Set a single season RBI record in the American Conference title game this year, second in the nation overall and runs driven in. And Jada Cody has been such an important part of the run production for UCF. Leads the team in RBI, leads the team in average, leads the team in home runs, and right now a home run would tie this game up.
Cody set that RBI record with a three-run home run in the conference title game. So doing that with style when they shut out and run ruled USF, their arch rival. Down 0-2 though to May right now. That travels a good long way, but is well foul. In the home run village, alive and full of fans out there. Nice touch for Oklahoma to do that, allowing fans who can't get into this way too small bar ballpark. They have a big screen out there. They can feel the energy. They can keep track of what's going on and track down some home run balls as well. Yeah, the new stadium, Love's Field, will hold 3,000 seats. I still don't think that's enough. Throw down by Hansen. Shaw Parker wandered a little bit too far, but was able to get back. And she has stolen 16 bases, as you see, on the season. Hansen out to talk to Nicole May. I thought there was a problem at first, but it looked like they just needed to get some more balls from the dugout. There's not an issue. At first, I thought he was going over to talk to head coach Cindy Ball Malone, but then he went to the mouth of the dugout just needing to get some more balls. We've seen so many foul balls in this game, but they needed to go, they needed to go over and restock. Terry Holt, the home plate umpire. One, two with Shaw Parker over at, thir at uh, first base. Very hot day right now, 87 degrees in Norman. Cody couldn't catch up. Pitches when you know you're the big time hitter with a runner on base, you want to take advantage of a ball up in the zone. But that one continues to rise. Nice spin on that to be able to get that jump over the bat of Cody. It starts belt high, does not sit flat because it continues to move. Able to record her second strikeout. Huge out for Nicole May. Here's Shannon Doherty who. Got the second of two singles off of May in the first inning. Since then, she has just given up a couple of walks. The Oklahoma Bats have been held at bay by Kama Woodall. Oklahoma has left seven runners on in three innings. to pack change-ups. That's just nasty. It's not fair when you have an off-speed. I, I wouldn't say that in the circle, Nicole May's change-up is devastating, but when you go back to back with it to lead off and at bat, it is so hard to make an adjustment. Beautiful pitch. Now expect, don't expect to see that three times in a row. That takes guts. But she does it. Back to back to back change-ups, and you saw the smile on her face knowing that that's not a typical pitch call, but I like it. Going to Shannon Doherty, who's the backup to Cody, who has to try to protect her. She's got seven home runs on the year, has some power. So you got to be careful around Doherty. One, two, sent into the crowd. Nice catch by a fan over there. Wow, you have to give it back. What does he get for that? A thank you? I hope. <laughs> if they were nice, you'd give ice cream or a nice cool beverage on a day like today. Yeah. It's pretty hot out there. Nicole May, back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the third inning. 
Not a fancy lineup of pitches, but changing planes and speeds makes Felton very effective. Comes in for Woodall. He went the first three innings, gave up two runs on five hits. Jada Coleman. The hits yesterday, and these fans are getting restless. They're not used to just two runs being on the board in the fourth inning. They win, they go on to the World Series just north of here, which begins on Thursday. Top of the order, excuse me, Coleman, Allo, and Jennings. Well, Coleman has done such a good job. Every time she's come to the plate, she's drawn the walk. One of the most patient hitters for Oklahoma right now has not let the emotion play into her at bats, which is what we've seen for some of the hitters for Oklahoma. It has been very chippy on the field. Coach Gasso, in the break, we chatted with her before we came back on air. She said, you don't know what's really going down on the field. And what we can see from the booth is there's a lot of chirping back and forth. There's a lot of emotion going on between these two teams. And that changes how you approach a game unless a coach is able to pull you back, take you back into the moment, not let the emotions take over. Coleman sends that into left field. Chase down a Hirano for the first out of the fourth inning. And now Caitlin Felton gets to face Jocelyn Allo, who is in an RBI chase. These are career numbers, a lot of Wildcats, and the wildest Wildcat is number one. And she's not far away. And <laughs> while I will cheer her, I will also let a tear fall if that happens in the next couple of games because we know how good she is. And if I have to give that record up to anybody, I will 100% pass the crown. <laughs> How many crowns can she have? All of them. <laughs> Allo sends that in to foul territory, but she she would have to have a whole bunch of them to catch you, because she's still, what, 19 away from tying? But how many games does she have to be able to get through another national championship? I mean, that's the goal of this Oklahoma Homer Sooner program, is to be able to play all the way through. So she's got all of the World Series and the Championship Series to be able to pull off that number. And I wonder if people will pitch her differently in the World Series. If a base is open, will they put her on? If they're smart, they will. <laughs> she hit a three-run homer in that situation yesterday. She is one for two today with a single. And, and seriously, it, it, very interesting kid. When she's in the box, she's intimidating. But when you talk to her, she just, she's, a, she's a little golden retriever puppy. She's she, sweet. She's one of my favorite people <laughs> to just sit and talk with. She has grown into such an amazing woman while being on the campus for the Sooners. And it's hard to be mad if she does take the next, <laughs> if she does take my place, because she's just such a great human being. And I love watching her play. So good luck, Jocelyn Allo. I'm excited to see how it goes. On the ground to Cody, who bobbled it, recovered, not in time. Hard ground ball. You know that Jocelyn Allo just <laughs> ignites the ball when she puts it, puts the bat to it. It's a hard ground ball right at Cody, but she misplays it first with the glove, and then the throw is a little bit wild. It will be recorded as an error. Allo beats it out, but it is an error because of that misplay by Cody. You see Doherty had it pop out of her glove, but I think Allo had beaten it cleanly anyway. Almost Allo staying in to run. Here's T.R.A. Jennings. Looking for her first hit of the Super Regional. Did walk in her first at bat this afternoon. But this is a kid who might be chasing a little Jenny Dalton Hill RBI record. I tell you what, when she has a freshman year that puts up 92 RBI from the very beginning, I'm like, oh, that kid's on my radar because <laughs> she put a she was able to push around so many runs. This year is the team leader in RBI. Yeah, even more than Allo, that one is a fair ball. Allo rounds and will get into third. Well, she'll, she will be held up on the Jennings double. These two players back to back. I do not know that there has been a more potent duo 
in the last decade to see the kind of power that these two bring to the plate back to back down the line it's like it has eyes all the way into the corner if Alo had had any more speed Jennings would have been able to get another RBI in that at bat and score from first base but Alo held up at third a nice easy stand-up double for Tiare Jennings and here's Grace Lyons last time she was up she hit her 10th home run of the season Space is open, Brito on the on-deck circle. Oklahoma in this game, two for six with runners in scoring position, but now over the last four, they have left seven on in three innings. This is a team that typically does not leave a lot of runners on. There's a ball left, neat, thigh high. It was a line drive that get out, got out of here quickly, but one thing I love about Oklahoma swings is they are very efficient, not a lot of wasted movement. They use the leg kick to get on time with that stride, and then it's just short and quick to the ball. Very powerful swings. I said 10th home run, double that. It was her 20th home run of the season, the third member of the 20 home run club for Oklahoma this season. With Alo and Jennings, both of whom are on base now for Lions. This is a true freshman pitching to the, like the 1927 Yankees almost. It's that kind of a lineup. Maybe better. I don't know that you can find a better combined group right here. They have these five, just these five hitters for Oklahoma are better, have hit more home runs than almost 300 teams. Including UCF, the team that they are playing. In this Super Regional, Oklahoma again won yesterday, eight nothing, run rule in five innings on the no hitter by Troutwine. UCF in its first ever Super Regional. And a 3-1 pitch for Lions. Goodbye. Grace Lions with the three-run shot. point we know that there's emotion on the field and we saw how fast she came around the bases grace lion not that she, she put such a charge in this pitch low and away able to go other side and she she has such a short swing such a short swing but all the power over the wall the outfielders can retreat but there's nothing they can do that ball is definitely out of here home run number 21 as she flies it on in, and now Oklahoma with the 5 nothing lead. Was it just me, or was that not a bad pitch? It was a good pitch, but that's exactly what you have to do with that pitch. You cannot yank that pitch. When you see the ball on the outer half, you have to let it travel. Let it get a little bit deeper. She does. Takes that ball just on the other side of center field. Perfectly executed. Tip your cap to JT Gasso. He has prepared these hitters so well. With the coach's son and assistant and the hitting coach for this OU team. There he is, about to become a father for the third time. He and his wife, Andrea, going to have a baby on August 3rd. <laughs> You're hoping. One That's day not too late. <laughs> yes. Um, 19th time, by the way, that an Oklahoma player has hit a couple of home runs in a game this year. This is a team that just continues to pile on these offensive numbers. Home run 136. They are averaging over two and a half home runs a game. Not bad. Yeah, it'll work. And rarely are they solo shots. I mean, typically you're seeing it done with runners on base. That's the thing that's so crazy is they execute when there's people on base. They rarely leave runners on base. And that was the difference between the, this inning and prior innings. They've left a lot of Sooners on base. Three in the first, two in the second, two in the third. But Grace Lyons, Erased that with her three-run homer. Rito. Second out of the inning. And 
Now Lindsey Elam's gonna come in to hit for Hansen. Elam has been doing the lion's share of the, of the catching with Hansen out, but Hansen did start a catcher today. Pam, what this tells me is Lindsey Elam will also enter the game to catch because Kinsey Hansen was run for last inning after she got that ground ball hit. She will, she's now coming out of the game again for Elam to come in. So I would expect to see Elam, who is hitting now, enter back behind the plate to do the catching duties next to him. Or at the bottom of the So probably just trying to be careful with Hansen coming back from the knee and ankle injuries. Elam thrown out on the first pitch by Cody, but Grace Lions, two home runs today. Where the wind comes whipping through the planes. <laughs> Is that the lyric? Yeah. Okay. And sweeping, as sweeping. Sweeping, darn it. <laughs> brush up on my musicals and <laughs> as as you predicted Jennifer Elam's back there behind the plate yeah she's been doing the catching duties in the postseason knowing that Kinsey Hansen was nursing those sore that sore knee and the bum ankle not a surprise to see her back behind the plate Elam is a player that head coach Patty Gasso is going to miss dearly next year talks about what a great leader she has been for this team and now the counterpart, Ashley Griffin, the catcher for UCF, starting things off here in the fourth. On the ground to Johns, backhands, throws her off. Yeah, when you get those sharply hit ground balls at you at the corner, it's easy to give a little shuffle. The thing I love about that play is that she did take her time on the throw. No need to rush it. On the corner, sometimes you do have to have a quick release, a quick transfer to get the out. But there keeps her feet moving, delivers a nice little throw over to first base. Taylor Snow gets the first out. This Oklahoma defense has been quite stout all season long, but particularly, but particularly coming in to the Super Regional. That was another point Patty Gasso made to us after the game yesterday as Verriano steps in. She said, our defense right now is playing really, really good softball. Well, and you have to play defense to win games. And right now, when it comes down to it, Oklahoma played good, solid defense yesterday, no errors. UCF had an error yesterday, has an error today. Those are the things that have to be cleaned up. They've been able to put the bat on the ball. They've got two hits in this game, but they've got to string some stuff together. And you don't want to give extra outs to anybody, but particularly a team as lethal as Oklahoma. Yeah, anytime you give them an advantage, they will try to stretch it into another run, another out, whatever it is. They are always looking ahead to the next play. This is a team that is so seasoned that they're looking ahead, not just staying in the moment. Nicole May, that's th three strikeouts out of the last four batters that she has faced. Yeah. Love that she was able to climb the ladder, go up in the zone. We know that she likes to use the curve, use the drop, use the changeup. But there, up in the zone, fourth strike out of the day. Nicole May trying to nail down this victory. Here's Janisha, Janisha Rowe, who grounded out her first time up. First year at UCF for a great freshman year at Florida Gulf Coast. Nice frame by Elam, but doesn't get the call. And we heard Cindy Ball Malone talking about, and there's there's some chirping. We, we can't hear what's going on, but you can tell that both sides are very emotional. Talking back and forth to each other. That's right to May to retire the side in order for May rolling 5 nothing Sooners.
maybe in 2024. That's when they're hoping to open the brand new field. It's going to be right across from the uh, basketball arena. That is one good looking rendering. A beautiful rendering of a stadium that fits a program that deserves a home like this, a $28 million project to be able to seat 3,000, which more than doubles the current capacity of this field. And sold out here at Marita Hines Stadium. Overflow crowd over there. Home Run Village. The footprint of that field triples the square footage of the current complex. Oklahoma nursing this 5-0 lead. Snow thrown out by the pitcher Felton Doherty doing a nice job to bring the ball in, keep her foot on the bag. That was a little bit of a scary play. And there's times where a pitcher gets a ball in the circle and you'll see them run over an underhand toss the ball to first base to get away from that overhand throw that they just don't do very often in a game. Now one away for Jana Johns. Been on base twice today, hit by a pitch and also walked. Emma Woodall, the starter, went three innings, gave up five hits and two runs. And the last inning, Felton gave up the big three-run shot to Grace Lyons. Lyons with a couple of home runs today. John sends it into center field. Janet Johns was already a member of the double digit home run club. That is her 11th home run of the season. Her last home run was back on April 22nd. So it's been a little bit of a dry spell for Janet Johns. This one though, able to put an exclamation point on a ball taken right back up the middle. I love the fact that Johnny Rowe tried to make an attempt to catch that one, but that one out of the park Home run number 137 for the Sooners. Building on their national lead in that department. And this is the 26th game in which Oklahoma has had three home runs in a contest. Two of them today by Lions, and then that solo shot for Johns. So Felton coming out of the game. If what's coming between you and a new grill are the words, some assembly required, come to Ace. Because Ace now offers free assembly, delivery, and fuel. So get a Traeger wood pellet grill, a Weber gas grill, or a big green egg charcoal grill. You won't find these premium brands in service at a warehouse store, only at your neighborhood Ace. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their grills. Right now, get free assembly, delivery, and fuel on your new grill. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Everyone knows to get wireless savings, you need to be on a family plan. <sighs> oh. With Visible, I get unlimited data for as low as $25 a month. No family needed. I guess I spoke too soon. Visible, single line unlimited data as low as $25 a month. Movies on your six limo. They need customized car insurance from Liberty Mutual. So they only pay for what they need. We are not getting you a helicopter. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Another pitching change here in Norman. The starter, Kama, Kama Woodall, who pitched the first three innings, is back in. Yeah, because of the re-entry rule, she's able to come back in and pitch the, the redshirt senior the transfer that came over from ECU, started her career at NC State going to try to come back in and get a little bit more velocity. Caitlin Felton lifted from the game, giving up a couple of home runs, including to Johns, who was the last batter that she faced. Felton is the true freshman 
He was considered to be the future of the program, but a little baptism under fire against the best offensive team in the country. So they go back to Woodall, who faces Riley Boone. Back in the batter's box after being pinch hit four in her last at bat. Well, and the difference between Felton and Woodall. So Felton, the freshman who was has been relieved. Felton was throwing a rise, a drop, and a changeup. But that's exactly what Woodall is going to throw. She's going to throw the rise and the drop, but she does have three different speeds. But when it comes to hitting, Oklahoma uses a very simple timing mechanism in that stride foot. Some have a higher kick than others, but when you time up a hitter, it all comes down to staying in your legs. So with different speeds coming at you, you have to keep all the power in those legs. You don't want it to leak out and come forward because that will bring the barrel with you. O2 on the way to Boone. Good chase, but unable to get to it. And Mancha in the circle. Very, or uh, excuse me, Woodall in the circle is very, very competitive. You mentioned she's at her, three, her third school, about to go to her fourth school because she got a scholarship to go to Baylor Law. Yeah, she's excited to start law school, step in there and begin the path to her career. Another 0-2. Oh, Called a strike, and there you see that part of the, just that competitiveness of Woodall did not agree with the call and kind of stalked in a little bit with a smile on her face when she didn't get the strike call. Well, and she's the most animated on the pitching staff. She's the one that shows her emotion, wears her emotions on her sleeve, very, very emotional pitcher. Gets Boone. And in fact, that's one of the things that her head coach, Coach Bear, as they call her, the nickname for Cindy Ball Malone, played against ECU, East Carolina, and Woodall knew that they were picking her pitches. And they were picking her changeup, and she said she came out of the game or, or actually struck out someone on a change, and then when she was going back into the dugout, she said, you know, you, you can keep picking it, but you have to hit it. And she said it to the head coach. Yes. Was not shy about her chirping, and I <laughs> think that's what you're seeing in this game. While we cannot hear the words going on, that is the feel of the emotion that's coming from the UCF squad and the Oklahoma squad, and it is coming to a head out here between the white lines. Back to the top of the order, and Jada Coleman hitless today, but has been on twice with bases on balls, and head coach Ball Malone said she liked that. She liked when that when Woodall yapped at her and when she entered the portal. She went after her and got her to come to UCF where she is closing out her career. And they both talked about that moment in that recruiting process before she got to UCF. And Woodall tried to apologize and Coach Cindy Ball Malone said, don't apologize, that's the energy I want you to bring to the circle for my team. She's been a great student. That coach says she's a genius and earning that scholarship to go to Baylor Law. And she's going to fight to the very last pitch in what is looking more and more like would be her last collegiate game. Yes, yeah, so much fight in these nights. Able to earn the first ever host opportunity for regionals. Got that 16 seed for the postseason. Coach Cindy Ball Malone put together that schedule knowing this tough schedule this season. And preparing them for moments like this, getting back to defend their national championship. 
Yeah, an exciting time here in Oklahoma. And the crazy thing is, anytime Oklahoma goes into Hall of Fame Stadium, it's like a home game for them because of the way that these Oklahoma fans pack the seats. Oklahoma City, about a half hour north of Norman. Grace Lyons throws out Molina. And Oklahoma State's already there. So it's, all, it's even extra special when both Oklahoma teams make it. Or those two Oklahoma teams are others, but those two Oklahoma teams is specifically. But there's a pretty special fan that comes to these home games, and she was able to become friends with Patty Gasso in a pretty unique way. Her name? Yvonne Little. And there she is with the white visor and the uh, white sweater, the little uh, green wrap around her neck. A 95-year-old who wrote Coach Gasso a letter a couple of years ago, lives in a retirement home in Norman. And Patty Gasso liked the letter so much that actually took her team over there to meet Yvonne and uh, the rest of the residents, and they formed this very special bond. Yeah, she said they, Coach Gasso says they bonded immediately. She attends the game. She brings her friends. Maria Cannon, the pinch hitter, pops out to Lyons, who covered some ground. Two outs. But look at, look at these two. I mean, quick friendship forged in a moment where Coach Gasso says, I don't think the elderly get the attention that they deserve. They have such great stories to tell, and Coach Gasso actually took her whole squad into the nursing home, into an assisted living facility, and they did an exercise class with the with the residents and then afterwards sat around and bonded and told stories and coach Gasso said she passed one table and three of the players were in tears as one of the one of the elderly women was sharing a story about her life she said it's so important for our girls to understand that they are so much more than just softball players that they are valuable pieces of our community and they have made trips back. And one of the great stories was during a game, Yvonne Little actually was hit by a ball. It hit her in the arm, and she was bleeding. So the, the paramedics came. They took her off, you know, patch her up, make sure she's okay. And as Yvonne was leaving, being, you know, carted out, she waved at Patty Gasso and held up the softball. <laughs> you have to secure the out, Pam, and that's what Yvonne did. Just so fun to see how these players have been impacted by these other members of the community whose lives would maybe never intertwine other than having an opportunity from their head coach to enter that home. They've exchanged phone numbers, they've shared dances. And just explain that there's more to life than softball. Johns throws out Volpe. Yeah, an emotional moment, and that's one of the things you can't think about as a hitter because if you let the emotion of this moment get too big, it takes over. So it has to be just another pitch and another at bat. She is from Hawaii, and her dad, Levi, who was uh, her coach and threw countless hundreds, if not thousands, of balls to her. Home run number 96 to break. Lauren Chamberlain's all-time record came in a tournament at Hawaii against Ashley Murphy, who threw the ball because she had been walked 16 times in the eight games between home run number 95 and 96. And now Jocelyn is like, Lauren, love you, but you're way in a rear view mirror right now. Yeah. And head coach Bob Coolen, very classy, came out, first off, pitched to her, had Ashley Murphy pitch to her, and then came out after she hit the record-breaking home run and put a leg around the uh, favorite child of Hawaii's neck. Well, and everybody talks about how you couldn't have written a movie script better than the moment that happened for Jocelyn Allo about 100 yards away from where she grew up on the field that she hit balls when she was four years old with her dad. I mean, just one of those absolute perfect moments for Jocelyn Allo. And now a 3-0. Allo takes a first strike. I thought it was a ball, but you know what? We get to see her with a 3-1 pitch. That 2-0 is my favorite pitch to swing on. 3-1, my next favorite. Jocelyn had a three-run home run yesterday. And a full count. 
to Alo. He's also the number one overall pick in the new WPF, in which Lauren Chamberlain is the commissioner. So well, she's got some thinking to do. She has some decisions. Yeah, but they're all good decisions. The game continues to go on for Jocelyn Allo, whether it be in a USA uniform, an AU uniform, or a WPF. Yep, she is on the national team. The perfect ending for Jocelyn Allo. On a full count pitch, crushes the ball. And it leaves the yard. The moments continue to get better and better for Jocelyn Allo. Huge swing, another big home run, and what is most likely her last at bat at Marina Hines Field. A no doubter in a full count. Go ahead and put her on, but they don't. Woodall delivers a strike. And Allo, in pure fashion, delivers a no-doubter over the left field wall. Levi, good job. <laughs> Developing not only the greatest home run hitter ever, but a great kid. I'm so glad they pitched him. <laughs> and, and everybody watching, you know, a diehard UCF fan, perhaps, but still, we knew again coming in, and you know, we talked about Woodall and her confidence. Both she and Mancha, the other pitcher, said, Yeah, we're going to pitch to her. And they've given up two home runs to her. And there's Allo in the dugout. Four home runs in the last five games. And it's now 7 0 OU. Now T.R.A. Jennings takes that down the line. Stand up double. Time for today's Capital One rewarding performance. Although that was a nice home run, but Grace Lyons has two today. Yeah, she went back to back with the long ball. Two dingers in this game. She's the rewarding performance of the day. She got home run number eight. And then, very next to bat, home run number nine. So, who do we need to look for? She was the one that gave them the energy and the big, huge lead. Love to see the long ball. And if you like the home run, you're in the right spot because Oklahoma has had four in this game. Wow, look at Woodall as she leaves, blowing kisses to the crowd, gets hugs because this is her last game as she has been pulled. Very good career, capping it off at UCF, but just too much for Oklahoma. So this Oklahoma team, we've talked about Jocelyn Allo. They have five players who have exhausted their eligibility. Allo, Lindsey Elam, the ones that have been here for the full five years, joined by Jana Johns, the South Carolina transfer. Taylor Snow, the Auburn transfer, and Hope Troutwine, the North Texas transfer. But what a job over the last five seasons for these very talented Oklahoma Sooners who appear to be on their way to another World Series. Yeah, UCF has put up a great fight in this one. They started the game off with a hit, which they couldn't even find one in game one of the series. But Oklahoma bats have come alive here in the later innings. It's been the home run that has put UCF in a position they are having a hard time responding to. Yeah, just so much firepower for Oklahoma. If you want to look up their statistics on the internet, you probably will look at them and go, <laughs> no, 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 that's going to be right. They're, it's right. Yeah. In this game, they've hit half of the home runs that they've given up in an entire season. Four home runs they've hit in this game. Their pitching staff has only given up eight as a staff. And so it comes down to not only have they been able to figure it out at the plate again this year. They had 161 home runs as a team last year. The four they've hit today has put them to 138. And now Gianna Mancha is going to have to face those hitters in the circle. Another senior for UCF. 
She comes in throwing east and west with most of her pitches. She'll stay with the screw in the curve to get ahead. We've also seen her implement some up and down in the zone as well. She's fallen in love with the drop ball and has worked really hard this season to execute different speeds within her pitches. It was Mancha who got the start yesterday. Lasted two innings, gave up seven runs, six of them earned, including the three-run home run to Jocelyn Allo with first base open. You can't get over that, can you? I just, I don't know, I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> but they said, to their credit, you know, like we talked about all the walks that Allo took between home run number 95 and 96 to break the record. They said they were going to pitch to her. They pitched to her. And now both Mancha and Woodall know firsthand what that's like. Yeah, they've, they've gotten to watch the ball rise over the wall as they've both given up home runs. Grace Lyons with a couple of them today. Solo shot in the third, three run in the fourth. Some other changes. Lee now has gone to play third base. Cody, who is Mancha's catcher, goes from third to catcher. And Griffin, who had been catching, is the DP. There is Jada Cody. Jennings over at second. She doubled after Allo's monstrous home run to start this sixth inning. Sends it down the right field line, and it drops. Now that area over there behind first base is kind of the Bermuda Triangle. If you can get a ball over there, it's hard for all three of those defenders to converge on that spot and come away with the catch. But I love the angle taken by Molina to get over there. Hard drop step by Doherty to get there. And then out and right, Denali Schottpacher trying to get there. Just could not find a way to get there in time on the foul ball. Tapped, Mancha, good play to throw out Lyons for the first out of the inning, but Jennings advances over to third. And remember, if Jennings is able to score, it would put UCF in a run rule situation, which would end this game one inning early. Grace Green coming in to bat for Brito. Yesterday to pinch hit and a line drive in left field needed a nice play to retire Grace. Looking for her first hit of the postseason. Grace Green was a household name for Oklahoma early on in her career. Right now just has four hits on the entire season. Three of those hits for home runs. Good ratio, but yeah, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year back in 2019 when she had 17 home runs. Hit 359, but he's seen her playing time dwindle. So much talent coming into this program. When she makes herself susceptible to the outside pitch, when she goes to that late kick on the stride, she continues to take that stride foot and land closer to third base than back at the pitcher. So the outside pitch is one that I think that UCF will try to fill up the zone with. Over the outside, but it missed the plate. Launch it in the circle like Woodall, who she just replaced, is playing in her final season. She transferred over from Boise State. And she is a school that her head coach came from, part of that recruiting process. Oh. 
This is green. Green has developed a really good eye. It's her 10th walk on the year, and now Sooners on the corners. With just one out. Elam, batting in the sixth slot, came in to catch for Kinsey Hansen, who got the start behind the plate. First time since the Big 12 tournament final in which Hansen has started with catcher. Also probably in her final at bat in Norman. Green takes off, gets second with out of throw. First stolen base on the year for Grace Green. That's actually one of the stats that surprised me was how many stolen bases the Sooners have, knowing that there's so many good hitters at the plate that they would put themselves in a situation to maybe run out of innings. But they've got now 50, they came into this game with 57 stolen bases on the year. Pop straight up into foul territory at third. And they lost it in the sun as the ball actually stayed in fair territory. That was a crazy play. The ball went up, was in foul territory, and your job as a third baseman is to keep those feet moving. But the wind brought this one all the way back into fair territory, beyond the reach of Macario, the shortstop. So the wind totally coming into play in that pop-up that was so high that it got above the stadium and then affected by the gusts of wind. It goes down as it hit. Emerson Lee, who was just put in to play third base, couldn't make the play over there. Base is loaded for snow. And wind and snow on the plains today. And 90 degrees. <laughs> A lot going on. Snow hitless so far this weekend. Auburn transfer, who also is going to call it a collegiate career after this season. Actually, he's not gotten Just a hit today. Play home in time. Snow reaches on the fielder's choice. Yeah, there's not much you can do about that as a runner. You're reading ball angle off the bat with bases loaded. Jada Cody firmly plants that foot on home plate, plays it like a first baseman. No need to try to get the out at one. There was too much speed going down the line. Yeah, just to clean something up, Taylor Snow did indeed get a hit yesterday. There was a scoring change after the game was completed. So just want to give Taylor credit for getting that hit yesterday. Now reaching on a fielder's choice. Two away for Jana Johns, who has one of the four home runs that Oklahoma has hit in this game. Hit that the last time up. Oklahoma's had a lot of base runners in this game. Left and loaded in the first inning. Left two on in the second, two on in the third, and then three run home run by Lyons in the fourth. Homer by Johns in the fifth. Not leaving anybody on in those innings and reminding everyone that when this game is completed, Texas and Arkansas are gonna play. Comebacker to end the inning. 
Oklahoma gets a home run from Alo. UCF came out swinging at the first pitch early on. They've developed a little bit more patience, but with that patience have not been able to be successful against May in the circle. The ball just trickles foul off the bat of Shawpocker. Nicole May has retired the last eight batters she has faced since giving up two singles in the first inning. She has given up two walks. That's it, just two base runners since then. Oklahoma winning 8 0 in a run rule victory. No hitter, complete game for Troutwine, and now a two hitter. Nicole May trying to nail this down. Oklahoma left the bases loaded in the last half inning. Or else we would be in a run rule situation. And referencing Jordy Ball, the freshman female who is not pitched in the postseason, has been throwing some bullpen sessions, and Oklahoma is optimistic that they will be able to use her in the World Series should they advance. And did throw a bullpen earlier. You know, we know that we talked with Coach Patty Gasso earlier, and she said that she was throwing that bullpen this morning and Patty Gasso went to that bullpen, but we see that right arm wrapped up. That It is a forearm issue that she is experiencing that has kept her out since the Big 12 tournament. 0-2, Schaubacher protects. Denali, a senior from Bradenton, perhaps in her last collegiate game as well. She's set, got her master's as a certified athletic trainer. We'll be working with one of the track teams at UCF. In the air, short center. We saw Coleman was playing shallow anyway. Schaupacher not a power hitter, first out of the sixth inning. finalist for National Freshman of the Year. Jocelyn Allo, a finalist for National Player of the Year. Allo won that award last season. And here's Jada Cody. Good news for UCF fans. She's only a sophomore. Yeah, the RBI queen of this squad will be returning back to Orlando. From California, who did not want to stay out west. Happy to go play college all the way across the country. He's put together back-to-back -to -back really good years. Seven home runs last year as a freshman, 14 this year with 74 runs driven in, which is second in the entire nation. And yeah, the American tournament most outstanding player is sitting on a 14 game reach base streak right now looking to get snapped if she doesn't get on in this at bat. Down one and two to May. Say that louder. Where was that? <laughs> that looked to be <laughs> over the plate. I didn't know if you were going to say it out loud or no, keep I, it to I yourself. Was, I, don't, I don't know. I thought I did say it out loud. Apparently not. <laughs> that looked like a strike. Yeah, that was a really nice pitch. In the air and over the fence. UCF. Scores its first run of the weekend. It's their power hitter, Cody. Home run number 15. Jada Cody able to help UCF score their first run in super regional history. Coming away with a big one. It's a good pitch on the inside half of the plate, but just doesn't jam Cody up enough. Short, quick swing. Able to bust that one over the left field wall. You mentioned it, Pam, number 15 on the year. That takes UCF to 42 home runs as a team. And there's all those dad getting ready to catch it. 
<laughs> he's all over the place. Levi, he's the home run magnet. That's right. Maybe it's his fault. Yeah, between his daughter and, and he did get the, the home run ball. He's got a ton of those, I'm sure. Most of the bat of his daughter. He's going to hide it. <laughs> but it's not his daughter's home run. Yeah. That's the crazy part. The veteran move by <laughs> Levi. Yeah, when you when your daughter hits that many home runs, yeah. you know how to get him out of the park. Here's Shannon Doherty now. Johns throws her out for out number two in the sixth. And you know, if there was any player that was going to be able to bust it out of the park, the only one to do it would be Jada Cody. She's the only hitter with double-digit home runs on a team that has relied on her heavily to put the runs on the board for them this year. Two out, nobody on for Ashley Griffin. 0 for 2, the catcher. Move to the DP spot. First pitch swinging, and she has been thrown out. But UCF has broken through. Jada Cody with the home run, 7-1. Oklahoma State has already punched their ticket to the Women's College World Series, but it comes down to execution in this pivotal moment, playing tight defense, pitching well in the circle, and the long ball doesn't hurt. Yeah, they, they could do that a little bit. Four more home runs today. Riley Boone going to lead things off. And the top of the seventh inning, Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you. Oklahoma wins. They do go to the World Series next week. UCF comes back to win and we'll have a game three for you here tomorrow in Norman. Doherty handles it herself for the first out of the seventh inning. And because of that long sixth inning in which seven Sooners came to bat, you know who we get to see hit again? A little girl yes. named Jello. Yes. <laughs> Jay Allen. Coming up, Jocelyn Allo hit a home run her last time up. Here's Jada Coleman. Allo on the on-deck circle. Doing that same routine every time. Routine every time for Allo. Stretching in the on-deck, and then once she gets into the batter's box. Every good hitter has a routine that they follow. It has nothing to do with superstition, although some of it does. But that routine is what sets you up to be successful in the box, making sure that you put your mind in the right place, you get your timing down in the batter, in the on-deck circle before you head into the box. Jada Coleman today, a couple of walks up for the fifth time in this game. This is the third UCF pitcher we have seen, Gianna Mancha, who started yesterday. UCF with 49 wins on the season. That is one shy of the program record 50 victories they got in 2015. They need victory number 50 to keep their season going. 3-0. Coleman lets it go by for strike one. Right up the middle, solid single on a 3-1 pitch for Coleman. Question of the day, do you pitch to Jocelyn Allo? Yes. Now, a kid from the island of Oahu, National Player of the Year last year, most home runs in the history of this sport. Hitting almost 500. So much good stuff. Mancha served up the three-run homer to her yesterday with the base open. Told us she was going to pitch to her. And pitched to her in her last at bat. Huge home run, no doubter. The signature swing, the top to the dugout, 
flies it on into home and dad Levi so excited for home run number 117 for his daughter. That home run. Pitch was thrown by Caitlin Felton. So Felton, Woodall, and Mancha have all had a chance and, and have given up home runs to this mighty team. Out of the zone. Now a 2-1 pitch. Holman over at first base. Well, Mancha was the hitter, or the pitcher that gave up the home run yesterday to Alo. Said she missed her spot, gave up a really nice pitch to Alo. And we know Alo is a patient hitter, but when you serve something close to the zone, she's not afraid to attack. Mancha said it was a good, it wasn't a good pitch out of her hand, and that's what led to the home run. Alo took the 3 1 pitch low to take the walk. Drew a lot of those in her career here. I'll say it again, that is probably her last at bat here. <laughs> at Marita Hines Field, we thought her last one was. But uh, Oklahoma bringing a lot of batters to the plate in the meantime. So now two on, one away. And Jocelyn Allo lifted for a pinch runner and an opportunity for the fans to say aloha and mahalo to her for her terrific career here at the stadium. We have been such a humble player. She goes right to the dugout without giving that chance for the crowd. And now the win. Pretty cool moment for the player that has meant so much to this team in her last time playing here at Marita Hines Field. Sophia Nugent running over there for Alo. Sophia can tell that story the rest of the way. I can train for Alo in our last game in North. Now, T.R.A. Jennings with two on and just one away. Oklahoma out hitting UCF 12 to 3. Four home runs for the Sooners, two by Lions, one by Alo and Johns. And the Cody home run, the only run not only of this game, but of the weekend. There were no hit yesterday, shut out by Troutwine. Jennings stings it into left field. Nice catch. Yeah, Tierno. Tiara Jennings, just that player that I, I circle to watch every single time this team plays. I don't know that she gets enough love from us as announcers because she plays surrounded by so many big names. But this young sophomore absolutely stings the ball in every at bat, but a good play, play by Bejarano definitely is able to rein her in. But she is a player that is going to continue to make noise for Oklahoma. Just a sophomore. Grace Lyons flies out to Schopacher to end the inning. Last chance for UCF. The previous five, they had won four of them. Yep, their first Three one. Three of them. Their first <laughs> one coming in 2000. Went back to back winning in. 2016 and 2017, lost to Washington in 2018, was the runner up in 19. Trying to go back to back national championships this season. They're going for their sixth. They already have five. Here is Maddie 
Bejarano. Bejarano? Correct. A fielder for this team who's made a couple of good plays out there. Arizona kid. Another Tanner in attendance here. Also the favorite player of Cindy Ball Malone's six-year-old son, Robert IV, who they call four. There's Tanner. Hey, come on, Maddie. Love the moments where Tanner can celebrate his sister, where his sister has been such a champion for him and for the opportunities that he's able to get because of the position that she's been as a Division I athlete. And it's also expanded her team's look as to how to represent Tanner and how to give opportunities to kids like Tanner. Coach Cindy Balmalone said, her son, Four, was diagnosed with autism, and that relationship that Maddie has been able to forge with her kiddo they call Four, because he's Robert the Fourth, that, that has been so special. She says that she just has gravitated to Four in every way. Lifted into left field. That's a nice running catch by Brito. First out of the seventh. Pinch hitter coming up for UCF. It is Savannah Adams, freshman, getting a chance in this NCAA tournament, hitting for Rowe. And I like the fact that she's giving this opportunity to Adams, a young freshman, to be able to carry over into next season, fill big shoes, and help a program get back to the national dominance that they were able to attain this year, making it to their first ever Super Regional. Nicole May trying to nail down the complete game victory and keep her record unblemished, 14-0 on the season. Adams already with a huge home run, walk-off home run in the American Conference Tournament against Houston. This is a UCF team that has had a spectacular season, 49 wins, won the American Conference regular season and conference championship. Hosted a regional for the first time, national seed at number 16 in the air for Lions. Two away. They have to retool at pitcher, losing both Mancha and Woodall, but Caitlin Felton, some great things expected from that true freshman. And I was really impressed with Angelina DeVoe yesterday. She's a spinner, doesn't come in with a ton of velocity, but was able to keep the Sooners from squaring things up. Last chance now. Justine Molina, second baseman. Transfer from Boise State, where Coach Ball Malone came from. This is most likely her last collegiate game. Same for Schopacher, Mancha, and Woodall. And that's it. Molina flies out to end the game. And the Sooners are going back to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma with a dominating performance. 19 hits in two games. Five home runs hit by the Sooners definitely able to come away with a dominating performance in Super Regionals. They will be heading to Oklahoma City to represent Oklahoma 